Ohayou gozaimasu. It is very early. It is 6.30 in the morning right now. I have just landed at Kyoto Station and I'm kind of on an adventure of things that I don't normally do. Um, number one, I'm traveling by myself. Number two, I've made absolutely no plans. And pretty much every Katie and Eric video that has ever been made is really, really planned. Um, I have come to Kyoto basically to hang out with some friends, but I have a whole day to myself where I thought I would just make a video and just have a good time in Kyoto and see what happens. Um, another thing that is happening that doesn't normally happen is that I am in my PJs in public. <laughs> so I feel a little bit weird, but I think they get a lot of people off of buses like right now. So it's probably not surprising, but my first stop is to change into normal clothes so I don't look so suspicious. That's a lot more like it. Now I feel a little more human. Um, I've got my brain on a little bit more now and I've arrived in Kyoto after a seven to eight hour bus ride overnight. I hopped on the bus at 10.30 ish in Asakusa and landed here at 6.30 ish here in Kyoto and I actually feel pretty good. I took some sleep meds and told myself you will sleep on the bus which I don't normally do. Normally I just get on the bus and I plan to do a whole bunch of stuff and usually not sleep, but I totally slept this time and it felt really good. I, I feel pretty ready for the day. And um, the first thing that I need to do is find a place that's open at 7 a.m. that will feed and caffeinate me. Um, I don't know how hard that's gonna be. I've already walked past a McDonald's, so there is bottom of the barrel out there for me, but um, I'd like to find something a little more Kyoto or at least a little more exciting. I decided to stop by my hotel just in hopes that I could leave my bag here. The sign right here is saying that they only do reception from 8.30 until 9 p.m. So it is 7.30 now and no one is here to like check me in or anything like that. I just wanted them to hold my bag, so kind of a conundrum, but I stood around for a little bit and people came out, so I was able to go in. Seems a bit evil, <laughs> but I have a reservation. And I came into the hotel, which so far looks really nice. And um, I found their baggage area. There's a little sign and you put your bag down here and you add a rope to it. And the rope has a little block and you write your name and when you're arriving and departing. I hope that I'm not breaking any rules, but I kind of feel like if they find my bag there and I'm on the guest list, it's okay. What we have here is a tunnel. You have one entrance, you swing it on around, you've got the other entrance. Not very much room to walk. What's special about this tunnel is it's only one lane long. So traffic comes from this side, then it stops. Then traffic comes from the other side, and it stops. But they never collide? Seems a bit worrisome. I just landed at my breakfast spot. It looks open and uh, I think this is a good sign. So I've definitely ended up at a family run restaurant. The reason that I picked this was because the pictures look delicious. They have a uh, pork soup that just looks very good. And um, I made it really simple. I just got rice and pork soup and some pickles. This is only open from six to 11. So they really are aiming for breakfast and that's really hard to find in Japan. And if they're only open for breakfast, that makes me feel like their food is good enough where they don't have to do the entire day. Maybe that's just me making up stuff in my head, but I'm about to find out. Oh yeah. Oh, it's got tofu in the soup as well. Nice little, I can never pick it up. I'm just gonna drop it. So here we go. My hands are actually really cold from walking over here. It was a 30 minute walk, not knowing whether I would actually be able to eat here or not. 
and when I opened the door, it didn't open the first time. Another patron had to come in and tell me, it's okay, you gotta try the other door. Really good. Um, very home style, very simplistic but rich. And uh, breakfast is served. All right, so now I'm fed. What do I do? There, there, there's no itinerary. This is very foreign to me. Um, I rolled into Google Maps, saw there's a pagoda under the name of Toji, which is a nickname for a friend. So I'm just gonna head over to Toji and see what that is and maybe find some things along the way or get inspired in some direction. So I'm gonna start walking. In my head, I just said the Buddha people didn't give me any coffee or uh, any caffeine. But what I mean by that is the people with the uh, pork soup, <laughs> the Buddha people. Um, uh, there was no like coffee situation there. I, I, most people were already drinking booze. Like there were at least three beers and two chew highs that happened while I was in that room eating my breakfast. So uh, I decided that I should probably get some caffeine somewhere else. And I actually landed at a little shop. The guy running the place has his own special blends. So I got my coffee and I got to watch him make it. And now, I'm keeping on, keeping on down the road. This is not how you drink like an adult. Eric is gonna be very mad at this shot, but I don't know how to do better. Because all I wanna say is sometimes you still think to yourself, holy crap, I'm in Asia. And I'm thinking that basically because of the pagoda just sitting down the street that we're heading towards. It is towering above all the other things and so iconic found a vegetable, not vending machine, but we need to come up with a term for these uh, places where people put fruits and vegetables where you can pay for them in a little box and uh, you don't actually encounter anyone. I don't know, it's not a vending machine. We'll come up with something, but found one of those, had some moyashi and other things in it for like 100 yen. Always cool to see that like people are making a way to connect what they've made to giving it to other people for money, for money. <laughs> so even after living here for 10 years, there's always moments where you just go, yep, you're still living in Asia. It really, like some things are more subtle than this, this pagoda sitting behind me being just incredibly Asian, <laughs> obviously. Um, but it hits you every now and then, and this definitely is hitting me. We have arrived and look who's here to greet us. Yo, are you guys seeing it too? There's only one leg. Can he hide the other leg? Does he have an amazing beard? Well, this just got japanned up a little bit. And then since the cherry blossoms are blooming, there's a huge tree right in front of the pagoda. It is incredible looking. And there's also another temple, I am assuming. I could be wrong. Temple shrine, temple shrine. It's gigantic and just overwhelming. People were standing in front of it and they look incredibly small. So a lot more to Toji than I thought. What is this? Some sort of imposter situation? No one's gonna know that you're not the real deal. We're on to you. Remember to stay on the right. You're no longer in Tokyo. Since Eric is not here, I kind of have to do the uh, knowledge of shrines and temples on my own, so I actually looked it up. Toji, we were just at a temple, and now I've walked into a shrine area, which the orange tori usually will tell you you're at a shrine. And uh, the tori behind me, it looks fresh and new, and then I was surprised to see that the year on it 
uh, was actually printed. And it turns out it's 10 years older than me. I'm walking kind of close to Kyoto Station now and I kept seeing Kyoto Tower. And I gotta say, that's a not a good tower. I, I don't even know if I got a landmark. But I guess it is an observation tower that people could look down from. It's probably best to be looking away from it than at it. During the Katsushika video that we shot, um, Eric and I came across a uh, slide that was made out of like stones. This slide is very much the same. It is made out of stone. And, oh man, there's just wet stuff at the bottom. I can't ride this slide. I could try to avoid it, but that'll be disappointing. I only brought the one pair of pants. <sighs> the building that I'm standing in front of really looks out of place in this area. And also, it's Shisa. The little dog lions that are outside of places look very much to match this building. They're really kind of cool looking. I'm not sure if that one's going to come out very well. But it's got its head stuck out and they kind of look like um, gargoyle toads. Just dropping this in here because I know that it makes Eric laugh. Alright, temple shrine, go in temple. This temple is huge and you can walk on it, so I'm gonna go do that. Do I gotta take my shoes off? Ah, oh, dang, you gotta take your shoes off. Man, that actually feels pretty nice. <laughs> Staying hydrated. Were we all hoping that I wasn't going to eat like an adult there? Because I've really worked hard for that to not go badly. The temple squeaks. It's cute. This might be the first time I've ever seen this. This temple actually has an elevator that goes down to the ground, brings people up to this level so that they can come in. Shall we ride it? Here we go. Looking around, not really anything out of the ordinary. No, no specific temple stuff. You gotta hit the numbers with your elbow. I don't have to close the door, door's already closed. <laughs> Just your typical temple elevator. <laughs> Random Corona tidbit. Convenience stores have inconveniently closed their uh, public bathrooms. Not all of them, but the one that I just went in to go to the bathroom, theirs is closed for reasons of Corona. Um, it's bad for me and other people who need to use the bathroom, but for the people who work there, they're probably pretty okay with that um, situation because they don't have to clean that bathroom anymore. Some of the bathrooms that I've been to in convenience stores have been some of the dankest, darkest places that I would never want to clean. So it's a benefit to them, but it's uh, slowing my roll right now as I try to find a bathroom. What kind of dog is that? I found another bathroom, so perhaps it's just 7-Elevens that have cut off this uh, service for the corona times. Lawson was still offering this service, and I would say on the dark, dank scale, it was dank but not dark, and I would not want to clean that. So the staff there are probably wishing that they worked at 7-Eleven, where they don't have to clean those bathrooms. The moment of truth is here. I have now walked about an hour to get to a ramen shop. For those who don't know, I have a ramen resolution this year to eat ramen as much as possible. And I'm coming to this ramen shop because that happens. And you'll find out what that is, hopefully if they're open. And it looks like they are open. It's about to get hot. 
Okay, ready? Fire! Yeah. So we got a lot of instructions there, and the instructions basically said that you shouldn't touch your bowl, don't back up screaming, don't leave your chair, put your valuables under the table or somewhere else. That was bizarre instructions, and as he was pouring the uh, fire onto the ramen, he was basically saying that it's really dangerous. So uh, now I'm just going to wait for the ramen to cool down. It doesn't seem to have been affected by the fire. It seems more like the fire just happened above it. Like, nothing looks charred on the ramen at all. I'm interested to know whether the gimmick is taking over the flavor. Um, does, does this live up to a fire potential and a taste? I'm gonna find out. All right, let's talk about that ramen. Um, overall, I thought the gimmick was gonna take over. I would say that the gimmick didn't take over completely, but it did outshine the flavor of the actual ramen. Um, that explosion was pretty incredible. Uh, the noodles were really good. I enjoyed the creaminess, but the broth was just kind of dead, and the condiments that I was given didn't even liven it up. Um, if, if I could give this place like one bit of advice, they need to come up with a hot sauce that's all their own and call it fire sauce. It would be a really good idea but uh, that hasn't happened. So I would say that the soup itself really wasn't that great. But the noodles were good and it was topped with like a crap ton of onions and I just spent the whole time wondering like, what's the flammability of an onion? And is that why they've topped it like this? Um, one interesting note is that you may wonder if the oil is destroying it in any way. Uh, like, whatever they're lighting on fire, like, is that causing it to be, have a bad flavor or anything like that? I wouldn't say it had a bad flavor, it was kind of reminiscent of when you cook hamburgers on a grill. Um, you have that flavor, you know you can taste the way that it was cooked. And that was present here, and I kind of liked the tang that it gave to it. Uh, overall, they needed to put fire on it for it to be cool. Nobody's coming to that shop without that fire. Um, and that explains why every single patron that was in there, except for a friend of a patron, was uh, a foreigner. So they're getting their uh, kicks from foreigners because the locals know that what's underneath really isn't that valuable. Eric, did I remember the B-roll about the ramen? I probably didn't remember the B-roll. I tried my best. There was a lot going on. There was fire involved. I should also note that uh, during my meal, I got a message back from a friend. Um, I believe she lived here at one point in time or she's visited here a lot. And she turned me on to the next thing I'm going to do. So I got a 17 minute walk to a train that looks like a lot of fun. <laughs> My friend suggested a sightseeing train. Um, I think the windows are gonna be open and like it'll be real breathable and fun and close to nature, but still in a train. Um, she has immediately said, I, I'm sorry if it sucks, which is not very uh, um, confirming of the ticket that I just bought, but I'm pretty excited about it. And I got here um, second to last train of the day, so I'll definitely get on and we'll get to see some beautiful nature today instead of just the city. Eric, the Black Burger is back. So there's a museum next door to where I'm going to get on the train. Yeah, and the sure. museum is uh, an SL and piano museum. I'll give you a moment to kind of decide what you think SL is. Dun, 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 dun. It is steam locomotive. Someone has made a museum for steam locomotives and pianos. That is a strange combination. <laughs> I'm waiting for the train to come and I'm shooting just some b-roll of the train coming up and I just noticed that there aren't any electrical lines above it so steam locomotive for real?
We are just stopped in a tunnel, and if I understand correctly what's happened is that the platform where people are getting on right now is only three cars long. So the back three cars are outside of the tunnel. People are boarding there, and they're coming up to the front three, or the people who have tickets for these cars have to walk up from there. So they just shoved the front half in a tunnel. <laughs> the fuck is going on here? We just pulled up to the station and there's like a crowd of Tanookis just waiting. <laughs> bye bye! That was a pretty good experience. I think that my friend uh, undersold it and maybe that was a good thing because then I was wondering maybe it's not going to be that great but it was really good. It kind of had a uh, haunted mansion meets nature kind of feel. She kept going through the tunnels and when you're in the tunnels, it gets dark and light and dark and light. And the only light you have sometimes is what's in the cabin. And it felt kind of unsettling, a little creepy. And then you've got the Tanookis that greet you that just come out of nowhere. And you've got all the sakura on the sides of the train and the beautiful nature. It was really cool. It was only like 630 yen to do that um, one way. So now I am not in Kyoto anymore. <laughs> I, have, I have no idea. I think I'm at... Kameoka Station, somewhere around Kyoto. So I am going to figure out how to get back now. All right, we've got a poster here and it's next to a special box. This special box down at the bottom has a lot of bottle caps. Um, I've seen in the past they get recycled into uh, syringes and things like that, so they collect them. This poster, what's going on here? I, I can tell that these people over here don't want this guy to put trash in there. But what is this emotion? He, he looks like he's kind of thrilled to get away with it. I, I, I don't know how to read this. <laughs> All right, I just finished editing your Kyoto video. How'd it end? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, it turns out that one of the files, or actually two of the files that I shot after getting back to my hotel just completely corrupted, so we don't have any of that footage. So you will never know where I stayed. But uh, it, it was, was a this, good day. It was, like, this, it was just you introducing like where you were staying, right? Yeah, I just showed like where I was sleeping. I stayed in a dorm and was kind of talking about how I chose the female dorm because I didn't want to deal with snoring. And Women uh, don't snore? They don't snore as much. Most of the dudes I've uh, had to wake up um, in the dorms, they've mm. been dudes. Most of the dudes? Oh, yeah. Okay, fair enough. So, um... Uh, and there was no snor uh, snoring in the room for mm. that entire night. And I, I just talked about the general facilities of the place, which those, it was nice. Those files are lost to time. All we've got is some really corrupted green screen with some glitching Katie. Yeah. <laughs> like that's, that's all that's left. And um, I, we don't know why her phone just had a heart attack, I guess. Did you enjoy it? Did I enjoy it? I haven't really, it's, it's hard for me to say. I haven't watched the video exactly. I've edited it and there's a big difference. So I mm. need to, I need to, I'm going to go through it as soon as I'm done filming this and make sure all the cuts and stuff are fine and everything. But yeah, it was fun. You did That's a good a job. That's a resounding you yes. Had, you had a good day. You did. Yeah. You had a... And I got there with no idea what I was going to do. And you know that I'll sit there on the bus and I will like, I'll stay up all night and I'll plot out every little detail. But you or let like, yourself sleep instead. I took the meds. I slept mm -hmm. all the way there. And when I arrived, I was just like, find food and things will roll from there. And the, yeah, I... I'm looking forward to seeing you film something else in the future on your own. I'd like you to watch this and then digest it and then see you do another one. I think that'd be fun. Building a progression of better and better? I don't know, just different. Like, just to see how you would tune things. I think that's, I think that's a cool experience, experiment. 
Well, if you want to see that, you're going to have to probably like hang out on those Instagrams and the Twitters and the Facebook. <laughs> good and, twist. Uh, good, good, yeah. good left turn there. <laughs> um, and uh, we have a Patreon, which trips like this and videos like this are not even anywhere near possible without like the people at Patreon who just make us excited to go and do stuff. So um, thank you to all you guys. I know that I'm missing other Did social media. Did you say we got a Twitch we've been using lately? I've been doing some in real We're life streaming. We're on YouTube. We're on YouTube. <laughs> That's good. Um, and, oh, we got a Discord, too, that uh, I hang out in. You should come hang out in the Discord. It's just a good place to hang out. And uh, I think that might be the whole list of things. Hit the like button. Leave us a comment. Subscribe, all those good bell rang. things. Bell rang, yeah. <laughs> I hope it heard that. The bell, your bell just rang. That was bell perfect. Bell just rang. <laughs> that was not edited in. If you heard it, uh, yeah. I think that's about all. So the next thing that's going to be coming is a video that I shot by myself. So that should be coming uh, soon, probably next. People think we're going to get divorced now because we like <laughs> rode a train and a bus separately. <laughs> Is that, that, that that's a sign of fracture? <laughs> <laughs>